What does that word mean? I hope you wrote that word mutinous down. What does that word mean? Well, if you're a mutiny, are you together or separated? Right, separated, aren't you? In other words, let's point out, early on, the challenge is to try to gain unity or harmony. How will they gain that unity or that harmony? How will they come together? Keep reading. But they were soon quelled, these concerns, and overcome by the wisdom, patience, and just and equal carriage of things by the governor, a better part, which cleaved faithfully together in the main. But that which was most sad and lamentable was in two or three months' time. Half of their company died. We go from a roughly 100, 100 plus. Man, we lose lots and lots down to 50. Right? Notice that almost all of them died. And in the process, only a handful saved the lives of the rest. The handful who didn't get sick. And everybody else, they died. So it's a major struggle to try to continue to maintain this harmony. Then, we've got this interesting juxtaposition between, comparison, between on the one hand our pilgrims and on the other hand the sailors who are on the ship that brought them. See, the idea is that the sailors show up, drop them off the boat, say see ya, and turn around and leave, leaving them completely alone. But before they could get away, well, the sailors on the boat are not the, uh, are probably not the cleanest and swellest of guys. Notice that, for example, they want to get some beer. The pilgrims early on, let's point this out, they have a deep reluctance to, to engage in drinking of alcohol. Okay? Now, Puritans in general have this feeling. Alcohol leads to drunkenness, which can lead to inappropriate behaviors, which can ultimately, watch my whiteboard, lead to disharmony, right? When you get drunk, you'll do things and say things that you probably wouldn't normally do. Danger. So notice Pilgrim's not at all interested in it. And yet notice from our reading that even though these sailors are not very nice to these Pilgrims, these Pilgrims show, what's the C word? The very bottom last line of page 62. What's the C word? The bottom of page 62, compassion. In other words, show the compassion so much so that they convince some of these sailors that these pilgrims are very special kinds of people. Notice, they show their love like Christians, indeed one to another. In other words, these are people who actually try to be friends and get along. This idea of unity, this idea of harmony will be central. Of course, then we'll finally be introduced to the whole notion of Squanto and the help with the natives there to try to survive. What do you find interesting about this peace treaty? Two things. This will be the first of many peace treaties on page 64 that will get listed, where the natives and the English pilgrims and others to follow are going to make agreements. We're going to do A, B, C, D. Did you notice number six? Well, number six is interesting, right? What's number six? Well, when you show up, don't bring no weapons. Did you find it interesting? Mentioned bows and arrows not to come, but notice no mention of the fact that the Englishmen can have their rifles or their weapons. Did you notice this? In other words, you guys come to us, don't bring your weapons, but we will definitely have our weapons when you come to us. Because why? See, already you're beginning to see the essence of this friction between the native indigenous peoples and the people who ultimately arrive. Of course, we're going to be familiar that in uh, about 200 years we're going to have this part of American history called Manifest Destiny, that movement west to try and conquer the land and the peoples of the land. And of course, lots and lots of treaties are going to be signed and then, of course, broken, right? So we're going to see the very beginnings of this kind of idea. Finally, there's this question of Squanto. Squanto's an interesting guy because he's going to pro appropriate much of the help to these people. And it always begs this question when you have culture contact. If you could see the future, Squanto, if you could see 200 plus years into the future, would you be so quick to help? So it's always an interesting question, right? Is it, is it a good thing to help the invaders from the outside? Well, they seem nice. They seem like they're really not kind of nice. I'm going to go ahead and help them, not realizing sometimes down the line this will be the beginnings of maybe some problems, right? Finally, of course, Let's point it out. Diversification of labor. Top of page 65. 
for them to survive. Everybody's got to have a job to do, and everybody's got a W-O-R-K. We'll call it the Puritan work ethic, and in many ways it's born of readings like this. Nobody gets to wake up in the morning and say, I don't want to do any work today. No, 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 no. Everybody pulls his or her weight. Everyone does his or her job. And then collectively, we have the potentiality of this. Last comment before we go to actual annotation. Watch my whiteboard. Let's just say it out loud. It worked. It worked. You're sitting here. It worked. Do you got me? Right? This is a significant point to make. We can have a tendency to look at the religious exclusivity of the early pilgrims and Puritans and say, seriously? But we got to understand, for its time, it worked. And they were able to find enough unity and harmony that they made it. All right, let's do a quick annotation now to finish our conversation. When we look at this text, obviously at level two, major themes, major messages, jot down at least one that works for you. You might be, for example, thinking about the ideas of the value of faith, the value of intelligence and, and courage. You might be jotting down something about the notion of the peace treaty that was involved at the end of this. Of course, we see our very first evidence of some notion of a holiday festival. Not going to be a holiday yet, is it? They're, they're in still survival mode. But a couple of hundred years later, this reading will give place to the idea that at least once a year, it's not a bad idea for the American people to sit down around a table, we'll call it November at the end of harvest season, and to engage in giving thanks. That is to say, Thanksgiving, right? All right, let's talk really quickly about the plain Puritan language of this passage. Notice, pretty simple language, pretty easy to read. Notice the information is direct and to the point. I'm working now at 2B, aren't I? I'm working at 2B. Direct and to the point. Not a lot of confusion about what we're reading here. And notice we're only going to get Bradford's mention of himself. Notice really just one time, huh? On page 62, he does mention the fact that along with several others, he himself was ill and almost died. And if it hadn't been for the help of others, right? Let's talk 3A real quickly. We've asked before, let's ask again. What is for you your favorite text about culture contact? When, for example, a group from the outside meets a group that's indigenous to a place and how that one works out. What's your favorite movie about Native Americans meeting the Europeans? Okay. And if you, do you have a really good film that you've ever seen about this time of the pilgrims? All right. Do you have a TV show familiar with this time that we would call The Pilgrims? Okay, so there you go. What's your favorite movie about Thanksgiving? Do you have one maybe or the holiday of Thanksgiving? Okay. And finally, let's ask this question in 3B. It's a personal response to this text. How do you respond to this text? I'll ask you a few simple questions. You can jot down answers. Do you see these pilgrims as heroic? To overcome this tremendously dangerous journey to arrive and so many of them die, to have to survive, to be able to found this colony, a group of people? Do you see them as heroic? Do you see them as worthy of respect? Okay. Or are you more inclined to say, you know, it's difficult for me to see these guys as heroic because ultimately what they give rise to is the destruction of the indigenous population. So you can have both views. You certainly can have both views. Where do you lean on that discussion? How does it, how does it come down for you? A second question. What are your thoughts about these people being so devoutly religious? How do you account for the fact that the very earliest people, these pilgrims, were devoutly religious? But today, it's hard to imagine a group of people going through all of this just for the right to go to church on Sundays. Even the most devout of churchgoers who are young people will often say, I get it, but man, I'm not, I mean, really? That's some serious danger to go through. How do you account for that? What are your thoughts about that? Finally, number three, do you see America changing in this regards? Do you see America having a different understanding of faith and belief than these pilgrims? Okay. 
All right, there you go. An introduction to uh, Bradford's Plymouth Plantation.